This time I'd like to give you another book recommendation, Firearms and Illustrated History. It's another one of those books that are great for beginners because it's a nice uh, introduction and basic reference guide. Starts out with the earliest firearms, cannon already in use in the 1400s, and the most primitive handheld firearm, the hand cannon or handgun, which is really just a miniature cannon tied to a stick when it all comes down to it. Then uh, the matchlock musket. I would really like to test one of these, but uh, it's surprisingly difficult to find reproductions. Now finding reproductions of flintlock muskets is easy enough, but uh, matchlocks seem rather rare. Uh, doesn't they, they don't seem to be that many manufacturers that make these, but that uh, would be quite interesting. So. Uh, they name the parts here, like the pan cover, the serpentine match holder, some information about the firearm itself and the um, accessories along with it, like the rest that was used at first because the first muskets were very heavy, the bandolier where they carried the powder. Uh, this is very interesting to see a combination wheel lock and match lock musket. So it's quite interesting to see um, them putting basically an, an obsolete lock along with a newer one. Although I guess it's debatable where whether or not the um, wheel lock made the match lock really obsolete because it had its own issues. It had a lot of moving parts that um, required more maintenance and there was more that could eventually wear, wear out or break. And if you lost the key that you needed for it, it was basically useless. So I suppose it does make some sense to um, have a back backup lock as well, uh, various wheel locks and uh, yeah, combination weapons. I actually plan to make a video on that separately at some time because it's quite an interesting thing. Yeah, some historical information, early flintlock guns, <coughs> quite some variety. Um, especially firearms from from Asia and the Middle East often looked quite a bit different. Sometimes more elaborately decorated, and uh, the, the shape was also sometimes a little different. Different categories, like uh, there's there's always a difference between military firearms and uh, you know, civilian firearms, be it for hunting or dueling or sports use. Discharger cup for launching grenades. They started with that pretty early. So quite nice to see these up close pictures because you can see the uh, the spring here and how everything is set up quite nicely. Here is uh, one of the paper cartridges. I, uh, I'm actually going to make a video about that, demonstrating how that works. This, this was the military's way of um, discharging firearms a lot more quickly because you had a, a pre-measured powder charge in here, then the round lead ball wrapped in the paper. And uh, so the soldier would just um, bite the end of the paper, tear it off, pour some of the powder onto the pan here and close the frizzle and uh, pour the rest of the, the charge down the barrel and then drop the ball down, ram it down with the ramrod. And uh, that's a lot quicker than having to, you know, first measure the powder, pour it in, then maybe put a, well, I was going to say a patch that they didn't use patches back then, but maybe some tow or whatever they, they used as wadding back then and then you know, it's just the, the paper cartridge is quite a bit quicker. Usually the, the fit is not as tight, so that does affect the velocity and accuracy to, to a degree. But really for the army, it was more important to fire quickly as opposed to accurately. Which is not to say that the muskets were, you know, grossly inaccurate. Of course, not as accurate as a rifle, but it's often you know, exaggerated exactly how inaccurate they were. Yeah, I got the percussion pistols, uh, cap and ball revolver. I'm currently looking for one, an antique to try out because that would be quite interesting. So, uh, yeah, this is really good if you just want to get a basic idea of what there is 
it is very basic information it does not go very much in depth as you can tell that there's only a little bit a little block of text and in some cases it's actually a little disappointing because it would be nice to have some more information by the way this is a, a very interesting firearm uh, they were <laughs> basically uh, trying to circumvent colt's pattern for the you know the revolving cylinder so they made it this way which really doesn't work that well the main problem is if you, if you get a chain fire with this you you are in huge trouble and everybody around you is as well <laughs> but uh yeah that was a way to try to get around that um let's see there was one one example where i noticed the lack of information that could be a little misleading it says here that the liberator had 10 rounds of ammunition which makes you think that maybe it had a magazine, but it didn't. It just means that you, there was a base plate that you could uh, slide, up, slide off and then just fill 10 cartridges in the grip and then close it back up. So you had to manually remove them one by one and load them in. So that doesn't really become obvious here. It doesn't even mention that it's a single shot pistol. So... If you don't know that, that is rather misleading. I mean, if you know, if you know something about firearms, you can tell that there's no way this could be a semi-automatic firearm because this, there's no slide, there's no way in which the action could move here, other than manually being operated. And also it should be mentioned that this gun was intended for short-term use, made of the cheapest available materials, and it did deteriorate pretty quickly. The information is, is so basic that you may get the wrong idea. So that's the only thing I don't like about it. Otherwise, it's a really, really good reference book, and it's great if you just want to get a basic idea of, you know, what came first, and then what is there, and what variations, and, and then you can look up specific firearms that you want to know more about so for that it's great so i would definitely recommend that i'll post the link to where you can find it down below in the video description and um, that's about it so thanks for watching